Grandel's invulnerability is an idea that that all living things are zombie cyborgs, that what we call healthy living flesh. There's not enough of that type of structure in reality to create something like multicellular organisms as we know them. So the blanks had to be filled in by things that are not as that are not a, that are not the same as that that are not what we would call healthy living things but all living things have this in it so it's like we wouldn't know what a full organism is that the walk of life is a series of controlled falls or controlled explosions or in a way that as hermes said that we are unraveling that our world operates in a way that incorporates a uh, a destructive thing to to live but it's doomed because of it 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 can't do anything else except self-destruct we're made to self-destruct <clears throat> that uh, death is this powerful part of what we are we're made to be destroyed and so a lot of the things in us have these powers uh, they don't kill us but they're destructive forces they're destructive things they and that every part of us has that in it so there's like this copy of us that's that if you could separate on a very small level the molecular level separate all these little zombie robot parts you could have a completely I mean, you would take away from the mass of the person, but you'd have like a, a shape that looks exactly like the, the person down to a very small level. And it's not the full person, but it's because it has all the little shapes and forms, it can recreate this dark stencil or this dark shadow or this dark part of all the little parts we're made of. Or right? this not a copy, not really a dark copy, but this dark fraction of our entire being that's been separated has enough of the properties of the the healthy organic the living parts that it can recreate like the the behavior but once temporarily until it needs to be picked like we're in a free fall uh, and grundell's invulnerability the idea is that that is this temporary free fall that your body is now missing the things that let it pick itself back up but because of this it's it it's doesn't it's not weighed down in a way there are a lot of restrictions that this dark part of you has because it has to to last it has to be adhered to the healthy organic parts but without them they won't last very long uh, unless there's some magical thing to just keep creating more existential ground for it to fall but regularly, Grundle's invulnerability doesn't last very long because it's a free fall. But because it's in free fall, it's like a lot of the things work faster. Maybe consciousness goes down. It doesn't have the, enough of the form of that. So that would be more like a lucid dream state. It goes just a little darker. But everything else goes way stronger. You get stronger, you're less vulnerable because now you don't... The vulnerability of the dark body was because it was adhered to the... The living parts that are vulnerable that have that need things to keep to be con long term but now because you're bound to a short-term form now that doesn't matter for right that doesn't matter immediately and you can get an arm severed and the arm just stays not only in place but it moves with you like it was still attached as if the dark body doesn't um abide by molecular cohesion it just maintains the shape as if mortal beings never move entirely by molecular cohesion the dark body is only copying the living parts that do that do have to be attached molecularly to work but dark body doesn't <clears throat> so when it's the dark body has been severed and every single little part of your being it's been disconnected somehow it can go on its own and um when you sever an arm, it just kind of gets cut, but then that doesn't affect it because the dark body doesn't need molecular cohesion. It, 
um, it gets it, it maintains your shape some other way. So just kind of uh, you go on like you weren't cut, you know, like your arm wasn't cut off. It just kind of, I guess, floats there, but very close, so it'd be hard to tell that it was cut off, but it was cut off. And that idea that it was there at the beginning, so now it's possible. Let's say <clears throat> that I said that let's say, the physics of some object could could cause events that involve people, circumstances, ideas, preferences to imitate the re result of the physics of like smaller things that are, seem unrelated. How could this thing then cause uh, events that involve very different th things like people and like how can you get life to imitate physics? Physics can't do that. <clears throat> it seems like that's impossible. But it seems more comfortable when you say that that it's part of what makes these events possible in the first place. That that these events are just amplified versions of the physics to begin with. So even though it seems inscrutable, there's some always going to be some inscrutable way that it can happen to conserve the properties of its foundation. Then it seems more it seems more comfortable to say it couldn't have been this way if it if it wasn't possible. If I say that it's possible, hmm, that seems strange. But if I say that that this thing happened by this happening, well, now it feels like well, if it was there at the beginning when it was made, then there's always the quality of it being able to sneak. Um, find some, life will find a way, that there is some natural overlooked way that this unlikely physical thing can take place, because it already has. If it has at the be if it did it once, it can do it again. <clears throat> the, this idea is the existential conservation, the idea that, that, um, that the physical properties of things can have strange, unlikely, supernatural effects on the world that conserve the qualities of an unnatural ability to conserve properties of physical properties of materials in things like events or people or things you wouldn't think that they could affect to make like them or like them. But they can, and specifically because this ability is what allowed those events to exist in the first place. It doesn't look like uh, it can, but it... Uh, that if something is founded upon something else, that there is some sneaky way or unknown way that it can... That just being founded upon something makes it possible for it to do things you wouldn't think otherwise it is possible. Dionysus... Uh, was known for the the rebirth, the idea that uh, that by dying, uh, being born twice. Athena was the first one to do it, I think, and then Dionysus, the last that I know of of the gods. And the idea is that you die once when you're a baby or very young, and that makes you close to death in some special way. So, in a way, I think Dionysus is more known for it. How grapes turn to wine, you know, they start out as more healthy, uh, good-looking um, objects, and then they turn into a more darker, you know, liquid, smellier, t stronger taste. You know, it's more upsetting. It's more like a death. But this will not go bad as quickly. It's now resistant to death. It's like this entropy effect. So you've been changed into a form where now it takes more to damage you further. And it gives you all these new properties. Now it can get people drunk. It has all these abilities and useful things that are derived from chaos and destruction. Similarly, the dark rebirth is like that, where by... And that's why I mentioned Grundel's invulnerability, where now all these things can start happening derived from the falls of life. Derived from the kind of the things that do help life, but they're derived from bad things in nature, the destructive parts of nature. <clears throat>
so they have this presence of being ugly and strange and upsetting, disturbing. The Joker, Batman, their power comes from something upsetting and disturbing. The severance from the the abyss, the severance from self preservation. <clears throat> That once you can do that, then your body releases all these abilities that are dangerous, that can hurt you. Um, which is why generally we don't use them. But the few people who do get to have the low self-preservation part. <clears throat> I always thought of Batman as like having this psychomagnesia that he thought that he could feel that reality could help him more than it was before. And that gives his body the ability to sever itself from self-preservation and use all those powers. And it's also what allows the Itma's powers to increase, like where with Hulk it's anger, but with uh, Itma it's more like psychomagnesia, or at least the, the feeling of it. <clears throat> um, the idea that like when you're close to death, typically you feel more pain because painful things are occur to force you away from things that will kill you. So when you're around things that are deadly, that cause death, you, there's often pain and fear. <clears throat> and it is, and part of the psychological part of that, that it changes your body and mind to be more like uh, destructive things that have destructive powers that because you felt something so strong that now other things that would typically stop you now don't stop you anymore. They get overshadowed. You don't feel them much anymore. The abyss. Now you don't care. You don't have to care anymore. Um, which uh, can be helpful in some ways, destructive in others. So it's like generally people care about things because doing so forces you to live. Um, or at least being afraid of things, I think we generally live out of fear. I find it strange that people go on about meaning. You know, I always wondered, what is meaning? Why do people keep talking about meaning? What is that? They don't give you any straight answer, because really it's a fictional idea that really no one cares about. People go on about it just because authority, because the church is saying it really, so people don't. But really people don't care about meaning. You know, they just want the kind of life that their ancestors had or some specific kind of state of life and that's it and they're afraid to die they're afraid of this you would just live your life in avoidance of things running <clears throat> that's really it and it's always inevitable it's going to happen but that doesn't mean we can bring ourselves to face it so i always wondered that if i throughout my life i've wondered if i could just kill myself then that would guarantee that i have the mental strength to endure death as opposed to letting it come get me. Then, like, if I don't do this now myself, then I won't have, like, if I can kill myself, I will have proved, uh, I will have proved to myself that I've built up the courage to face death with honor, die a good death. But if I sit here and try to avoid it as long as possible, that shows weakness to death. It shows the inability to confront it. And that when it comes for me, it will be worse. I don't know if that's true, but it's an idea that I've had throughout my life. The Dark Rebirth, Athena and Dionysus. Also, the idea of loss. You know, this idea of... Um, when you see people who are strong, they're always like Wolverine, like they've gone through some horrible thing. Uh, like, it seems to suggest that being closer to death is necessary for the greatest powers in, in life. <clears throat> um, uh, and uh, that when I notice it is loss, then, and Phobos is the god of loss and fear. He uh, Loss has a lot to do with this when we feel that there is a natural force that is helping us. That also, humor has a lot to do with that. You know, when you feel that nature has given you this power to succeed at something, and all the parts are there, but or at least there's a lot of the things that do help you do that in nature, and then you handle the rest. That there's this, like, how do you learn something? How do you remember something? It's on the tip of my tongue. You know, something in me is doing something for me. 
and you need that, that no one could really personally themselves handle everything in nature. You need most of the stuff done for you. It's so much like no one could put nature in a good form by like, I choose to do this kind of mental behavior. It takes a, you know, just do it for me. So like tip of my tongue, remember kind of mental stuff to do anything, even the simplest action, just to, you know, turn, move your hands. It's like such a, I couldn't think, oh, I'm going to do this and then move it this angle. Like, it's not something I have to think much about. <clears throat> like, you need that. You, we don't have enough m mental power to, to do that comfortably uh, by choosing the way we think about speaking or other things. And when you have all that natural assistance, and it still doesn't work. I think that's where loss, that's where humor, humor, that, that you were close, but it wasn't enough. That you were, you had the natural stuff and it wasn't enough. And when that fails, when that happens, <clears throat> we want something more permanent. We want something that we feel is more stable. That, well, that if destruction, if in the case of humor, it seems that we overlook things, we do things that generally you assume people don't want to, often based on what authority is telling you to do. So if everyone is going to obey, then disobedience was absurdity is often a thing people laugh at. But regardless, it's when people assume you're trying to do this, that that is the successful objective and you have a lot of the natural help to do it, but not enough. And because of that, it it doesn't work. But then it's because it's close, it then the little thing changes, that little piece missing changes and it gets put there and then it works. I think that's kind of where humor comes from. And loss is the idea that when you, there's a certain amount of help, there's a certain amount of successful power to do something where if you still fail, then it feels bad. <clears throat> For you to have, like, I wasn't really trying. We need to be able to say that. I wasn't trying. Because if you, if everything you, if a lot of your successful power went into something and it didn't work, then you have to feel bad that you don't have enough power. And in nature, we feel this, uh, we feel that, that, not necessarily meaning that life is psychomagnetic, that life can, like anything is possible, that life can arrange itself in any form that helps us. I, life is not meaningful. It can make some things uh, help us, which is why we exist. It created the things that allowed us to have as much help to exist as we have, <clears throat> to have as good a life as we have. But it doesn't do that in a way where it could be consistent all the time and do, let alone do anything to help us, let alone do anything. Uh, but regardless of that, to be born into a tomb, to, to feel that, if not meaning that there is some kind of natural help to nature, but once again, that there is that natural like it's a broken machine, that there, there is stuff here to help us, but it's just not quite enough. Like it's missing something to make it work and it's it will never work. To have all that and it still not work. It's then that people turn when they feel like their wings have been clipped, when they were born with all the little things in them that do something great, and then it's just one something small missing that now it's permanently ruined. That's when people start to feel a loss. That you know, it's too close to fail. It was too close to feel good about not having it. <clears throat> and it's part of why the abuser wants to maintain abuse. I have so much power to then give that up to not be able to control this being to, um, for this being to upset me to have any effect, to even to walk through the street to do anything. That it upsets them because you have such power and to, to be affected by someone, it demoral, it, uh, <clears throat> it takes away their feeling of being successful, able, potent, able to do things. 
so they want to make you unable to restore their feeling that they have control over whatever it is, or whoever it is. And in life, when we feel that we've lost our natural being treasured by reality being helped in this way, we turn to something that is morbid and disturbing and destructive because we feel that that is what is the strongest. If, if we can't, when you fail to do good, then rule in hell you know, or something. <clears throat> That's the only thing left for you now. We value it because we feel like that's there are only two things. You can be a creator or a destroyer. Well, conveniently, if you're born with all the stuff that works and makes you a creator, well then, good on you. You will succeed at that long, con constructive career, constructive life. But when it, you have that, all your success powers are for a creator, and it's not enough to work. So now there's not anything left to do something else. The only thing left is to try to get something good out of the emptiness, out of the, the things that have no good in them. People, um, I think of that song by Tove Lo, what was it, um, Shivering Gold, it's just the kind of, or a lot of the things, the themes, uh, it seems like kind of the darkness of the soul, the and specifically kind of imaginary friends stay with me to the end, the kind of like reference childhood. It's this idea like when you've lost something like that, there's th there's this want to reclaim being protected, to reclaim that help, to want something that once again, like there's only one other alternative to the constructive, nice, pleasant, bright things, and that is that now evil can give you a state, you shed this husk, shed this person that that doesn't work, and become another nature, be, have a new nature, become another living, another type of being that nature does help. So now you're being helped again, you're being... <clears throat> yeah. To... As if it, it takes that sort of Um, you know, fragile, soft, to be helped by nature, you have to be in a specific state, as if one must return to the state of being beautiful and wanted and protected and fragile so that the universe will take care of you, will protect you again, so that you can reclaim um, the state of a being, that you have to go through that beginning state in order to have an entire natural state like we, I have to, we have to go back to the beginning we have to start over restart <clears throat> that means going through the early state the virgin virginity that kind of thing that the virgin is protected because they haven't they haven't lost the thing of value yet that makes them expendable so hold on to it Athena is known as the goddess of virgins though um I think she does conceive a child she has sex with and conceives a child with Hephaestus. Uh, I th but either way, I mean, in a similar way, Ares is the god of valor, but he's a coward. I don't, I don't know how that's supposed to work. <clears throat> um, I don't know if I'm ever to make videos with Ares. I probably would just resort to just giving him moments of valor and moments of cowardice. Similarly with Athena, she'll have, like, generally be virgin shield, virgin protection, and her symbol is the shield and spear. But then just, you know, once very rarely she'll have this um, intimate, what do you call it, sexual feeling or sexual whatever with Hephaestus, or that's it. <clears throat> Either way... Is the idea of the being forever virgin that one that it it ha, it comes with that feeling like when you think of really psychotic crazy people you think of like the little chime playing the little ballerina box like something that's disturbing because we have this sense that when somebody is returning to the womb returning to the state of infancy when they have to return that means something really bad has happened 
and we're concerned of like what if that what is it what what if that happens to us that we have to be reborn and we have to restart to reclaim like what is it about nature that has caused someone to feel like i have to abandon my entire being cuz nature has taken something great away from me what if that happens to us <clears throat> to shed my entire flesh a lot of my mind so i can have an entire new being that has its natural protection still intact the cosmic winds whip through the emptiness at the core of the being and that wind whistles a dainty chime like a lullaby a call back to the womb a call to return back to the beginning and reclaim one's special protection so that and in that one can start over has the the <clears throat> one can get the only other beginning of a person so you can form that strength, that feeling of comfort with existence so one can be happy again. You have to have that first part. And, uh, but the only other, like, it's like there are only two startups for a person. You have, like, the the good one and the bad one. Well, the good one's gone, so you have this one now. So you have to start with this kind of person. And then, then you form the rest of you around that. And it can form a... The bridge is complete. Then you have all the stuff you need to have the kind of existence that you want. Something I wanted to say.